NASA just announced the cancellation of Viper's launch. And to make matters even worse, it seems like man won't be setting foot on the moon for the next two years. Ever wondered why NASA keeps hitting these roadblocks? From the Viper moon rover cancellation to delays in the Artemis missions, it seems like the space agency can't catch a break. But what exactly is going on? How is NASA, the biggest space agency in the world, struggling to put a man on the moon when Elon Musk will be sending celebrities to Mars very soon? Something just doesn't seem to add up. But let me break down everything to make it simpler for you here. This is the space technician signing on, and without any further ado, let's dive into the details and the challenges that are grounding NASA's lofty ambitions. NASA recently made headlines with the cancellation of its Volatiles Investigating Polar Exploration Rover, or what they call the Viper Moon Rover mission, primarily due to budget concerns. The mission, originally slated for a 2025 launch, was intended to search for lunar ice deposits near the Moon's South Pole. The crucial information it would have given would have educated us about the origin and distribution of water on the Moon, as well as how to harvest its resources for future human space exploration. NASA would have utilized the rover's data to determine where the Moon's ice is most likely to be located and easiest to reach, making Viper the first resource mapping mission on another extraterrestrial body. That was the plan. And now it seems that Viper will either be sold to the industry or dismantled for parts. The Viper mission was part of NASA's CLPS initiative, which is short for Commercial Lunar Payload Services, and had already cost around $450 million, which doesn't even include the launch costs. Adding further development and launch costs would have required an additional $84 million, pushing the project beyond feasible financial limits. We were very confident in the Viper team. This really gets down to cost and a very constrained budget environment in the United States, said Joel Kearns, NASA's Deputy Associate Administrator for Exploration, regarding the cancellation in a teleconference that took place on July 18, 2024. This decision was not a reflection on the quality of the project, but rather a stark illustration of the financial pressures facing the agency. Nicola Fox, Associate Administrator of NASA's Science Mission Directorate, stated, First and foremost, this is in no way a reflection on the quality of the work from the mission team that are working to build this rover. They've put in a lot of effort, even throughout the pandemic, to construct this rover to make it able to search the moon for water. The car-sized Viper was fully constructed and undergoing environmental testing at the time of its cancellation to make sure the rover could withstand the physical rigors of launch and the hostile atmosphere of space. According to Cairns, NASA now plans to potentially deintegrate and reuse Viper's scientific instruments and components for future moon missions. However, before doing so, the agency will first inquire about any interest from domestic and foreign commercial partners in using the rover in its current state. Despite this setback, NASA remains committed to its lunar exploration goals. The agency plans to repurpose the Viper's scientific instruments for other missions, such as the Lunar Terrain Vehicle set to launch in 2024. This vehicle will operate in the Moon's shadow regions to study ice formations, ensuring that some of Viper's objectives can still be met. In addition to being built to carry astronauts on the Moon, it can be controlled remotely, which may allow it to investigate areas that are perpetually shaded close to the Lunar South Pole. NASA's broader budget reductions have forced the agency to make difficult choices across multiple programs. With a $1 billion cut in its financial year 2025 budget for science programs, the cancellation of Viper is just one example of the sacrifices needed to manage these financial constraints. The Euroclipper mission, another ambitious project aimed at exploring Jupiter's moon Europa, is also in jeopardy. Europa Clipper, formerly known as the Europa Multiple Flyby Mission, is a NASA space probe that is currently in development. The spacecraft is presently scheduled to launch in October 2024 and will explore the Galilean moon Europa via a series of flybys while in orbit around Jupiter. It's NASA's largest spacecraft yet designed for a planetary mission. Plans to send the spacecraft to Europa were originally planned as missions like Europa Orbiter and Jupiter Icy Moons Orbiter, in which a spacecraft would be injected into orbit around Europa. However, because of the negative effects of radiation from Jupiter's magnetosphere in Europa orbit, it was concluded that it would be safer to place a spacecraft in an elliptical orbit around Jupiter and conduct 44 near flybys of the Moon instead. And that's when the Europa Clipper was brought into the scene. Europa Clipper's goals are to explore Europa, research its habitability, and help select a landing location for the eventual Europa lander. This investigation is centered on understanding the three fundamental prerequisites for life liquid water, chemistry, and energy. However, upon investigation, it appeared that some parts of the Europa Clipper might not be able to handle the radiation, being that close to Jupiter. Because Europa is far within the strong radiation bands around Jupiter, even a radiation-hardened spacecraft in near orbit would be operable for only a few months. 
And as there are only a finite number of antennas on Earth to receive scientific data, most devices can collect data far faster than the communication system can communicate it. As a result, another important constraint on science for a Europa orbiter is the time available to return data to Earth. In contrast, the amount of time the equipment can do close-up observations is less significant. According to NASA, they had specifically used the kind of electronics and machines that'll meet the standards. But when the clipper went through testing by a third party, it revealed otherwise, which means they might have to change the machinery. The problem isn't that the instruments would have to be changed. It was about the launch that was supposed to take place this year. The change might result in the delay of the launch. The change in the hardware and inner technical machinery will take months, and in addition to testing the machine under harsh environments that it'll have to face once launched, will take a lot of time. And suppose it gets launched, it'll take a long time to return as it has to use planetary alignment to get out of Jupiter. The Europa Clipper mission faces delays due to the technical machinery and possible funding cuts, raising concerns about its future. The mission, which requires significant financial and technological investment, is now scrutinized for potential cost-saving measures. The scrutiny comes as part of NASA's broader efforts to streamline spending across its portfolio of projects. The cancellation of the Viper Moon rover, the uncertainty surrounding the Europa Clipper mission, and the delays all point to a broader issue within NASA. The struggle to balance ambition with financial and technical reality. As NASA navigates these challenges, the agency must prioritize its projects, often leading to difficult decisions about which missions to support and which to delay or cancel. The setbacks in NASA's lunar exploration program are perhaps most evident in the delays of the Artemis missions. For NASA and its astronauts, the Moon is no further away in terms of distance, but it is slipping further into the future. Officials of the space agency announced that Artemis II, the first American mission to send astronauts close to the Moon in more than 50 years, will not take place late this year as had been scheduled. Artemis II will be the first mission to send astronauts to space using NASA's huge space launch system rocket and Orion capsule and NASA officials want to fix potential problems that could endanger the crew. We don't fly until it's ready, Bill Nelson, the NASA administrator, said during a news conference. Safety is paramount, so what I want to tell you is we're adjusting our schedule to target Artemis II for September of 2025 and September of 2026 for Artemis III, which will send humans for the first time to the lunar south pole, he added. The delay was attributed to a variety of technical issues, including concerns about electronics and the life support system that will keep the astronauts alive inside Orion, ongoing analysis of wear and tear on the capsule's heat shield during an earlier uncrewed mission, and launch tower repairs. This mission aims to carry astronauts around the moon and test the systems necessary for future lunar landings. Unlike the Apollo missions, Artemis II will not reach lunar orbit. Rather, the Orion capsule will swing around the moon, utilizing lunar gravity to sling it back to Earth for a splashdown in the Pacific Ocean. The entire trip should take about 10 days. The crew will include three NASA astronauts. Reed Wiseman, the commander, Victor Glover, the pilot, will be the first person of color to leave low Earth orbit, and Christina Koch as the first woman, as well as one Canadian astronaut, Jeremy Hansen, will be the first non-American to leave low Earth orbit. Amit Kshatriya, NASA's Deputy Associate Administrator in charge of the Moon to Mars program, stated that the main reason for the Artemis II delay was the discovery of difficulties with the valves in the Orion capsule's life support system, and thus the development delays in key systems including the Space Launch System rocket and the Orion spacecraft have pushed the timeline back. Similarly, Artemis III, which plans to land astronauts on the lunar surface, has also faced delays. Valves intended for the Orion capsule for Artemis III failed tests. That gave us pause to stop and look at that circuit in more detail, Mr. Kshatri explained. The valve components for Artemis II had passed tests and been installed, but it became very clear to us that it was unacceptable to accept that hardware and we need to replace it in order to guarantee the safety of the crew, Mr. Kshatriya said. He said NASA also discovered a potential deficiency in Orion's batteries if the spacecraft needed to separate quickly from the rocket in case of an emergency. Artemis I was a huge success, and NASA officials hoped that Artemis II would follow two years later. Although NASA's budget has grown significantly in recent years, it still represents a far lower portion of the government budget than it did during the Apollo program's peak in the 1960s. The Government Accountability Office stated in December that the December 2025 target for the Artemis III moon mission was improbable, citing overly optimistic deadlines for the building of the Starship lunar lander and the spacesuits required for astronauts to walk on the moon. And hence, the mission initially targeted for 2025 is now postponed to 2026 or later. The delays in the Artemis missions highlight the complex and often unpredictable nature of space exploration. Balancing ambitious goals with technical realities and budget constraints is a constant challenge for NASA. The agency, though, remains committed to its lunar exploration objectives, but the path forward is fraught with obstacles. 
Despite the delays, NASA's leadership remains optimistic about Artemis II and what it will represent for space exploration. But these delays have broader implications for NASA's long-term goals. The Artemis missions are seen as a stepping stone for future Mars exploration, and delays in these missions could ripple through the timeline for human exploration of the Red Planet. As NASA works to overcome these challenges, the agency must find ways to streamline its operations, manage costs effectively, and maintain public and governmental support for its ambitious exploration plans. In light of the ongoing challenges and uncertainties faced by NASA, the agency has taken a proactive step by requesting an emergency response study from SpaceX. This request isn't just a routine measure, but a strategic initiative aimed at enhancing astronaut safety during critical missions. NASA awarded SpaceX $266,678 for a special study for emergency response. This study focuses on developing robust contingency plans and procedures to address potential emergencies during space missions. Given the complexities and inherent risks of space travel, having a detailed and well-coordinated emergency response plan is crucial. The collaboration between NASA and SpaceX underscores the importance of leveraging private sector expertise to bolster the safety and success of space missions. SpaceX, with its proven track record of innovative solutions and successful missions, is well equipped to undertake this critical study. The study involves exploring various scenarios where crew safety could be compromised, such as during launch, orbit, or re-entry phases. SpaceX will evaluate the capabilities of the Crew Dragon spacecraft, particularly its integrated escape system. The system, powered by eight Super Draco thrusters, can rapidly propel the crew away from the rocket in case of an emergency, ensuring their safety. Additionally, the study will assess the preparedness of recovery teams and their ability to respond swiftly to emergency splashdowns. Highly trained rescue personnel are pre-positioned along the flight path and near the splashdown sites to provide immediate medical assistance and ensure a swift recovery. By commissioning the study, NASA aims to fortify its emergency response strategies, ensuring that astronauts can embark on their missions with the highest level of safety and preparedness. This initiative reflects NASA's commitment to continuous improvement and innovation in the face of evolving challenges in space exploration. Other projects facing challenging choices may have far-reaching consequences for NASA's research and astronomy objectives. For example, the Chandra X-ray Telescope faces a dark future because its budget has been dramatically reduced from $41.1 million in 2025 to only $5.2 million in 2029. The ambitious Mars Sample Return mission is also looking for new operational approaches after its costs skyrocketed to more than $11 billion, causing congressional outrage. But despite all these challenges, NASA is still on its run to develop more space technologies. For instance, they're working to develop Dune-inspired still spacesuits. Imagine exploring the vast, barren landscape of Mars. In such a hostile environment, every drop of water counts. Inspired by the iconic still suits from Frank Herbert's Dune, NASA has been developing high-tech spacesuits designed to recycle the water released from the astronauts' bodies. These suits could be a game-changer ensuring that astronauts stay hydrated by reclaiming sweat, urine, and even breath moisture. The concept is simple yet revolutionary. Just as the still suits in Dune allow the inhabitants of Arrakis to survive in extreme desert conditions, NASA's advanced suits aim to capture, purify, and recycle water. This is critical for long-duration missions where resupplying essentials like water isn't feasible. However, turning science fiction into reality is no easy feat and they're trying to work everything out despite all the budget constraints, technical challenges leading to delays, which keep them under public scrutiny. NASA's journey to the stars is a testament to human ambition and ingenuity, but it's also a reminder of the financial and technical challenges that come with space exploration, as well as in other fields of science and technology. Despite setbacks like the Viper cancellation and Artemis delays, NASA's commitment to exploring the final frontier remains unwavering. Why do you think NASA faces so many challenges? Is it budget and technical issues, or are there any deeper problems? Leave your thoughts in the comments, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more space updates. This is the Space Technician signing off for now, and I'll see you Space Cowboys in the next one.